Nelly, you're holding up the gateway. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Here we go. Woody, this way. Come on. Come on. Baloo. boy. Oh, the other two decided to come in. Hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to Rover's Mead. I'm on the yard this morning. Oh man, I have been trying to shoot a vlog now for days. And every time I get the camera out, it starts raining. <laughs> and uh, my camera doesn't like the rain. So today's video is actually being shot on my GoPro. Uh, it's being shot on Gary, Gary the GoPro. I know, don't even go there. My other camera's called Kevin as well. So we have a Kevin and a Gary, because <laughs> we're just crazy people, apparently. Um, and normally I would film, uh, normally I would film everything on Kevin down here because he has a really good microphone attached to him. And it's just like, it's a bigger, fancier camera. Well, I say fancy, I mean, it's an old model and I did buy it secondhand, but it is more advanced, should we say, than a GoPro. Um, so I can play with the sound settings on it. And like I said, it's got a really good microphone. So I can just make it so that I filter out a lot of that horrible background noise from the motorway, which is right behind me down there just so you guys don't have to hear it bellowing away in the background of my videos. But Kevin doesn't like rain, so can't shoot anything out here when it rains and it just keeps raining. Obviously it's not raining at this precise moment. It chucked it down about 10 minutes ago. And every other time this week that I've got the camera out and I've started shooting something, it just started raining. And I thought, you know what? Let's just try it on the GoPro and let's just hope that the audio is not a complete and utter disaster. Baloo! Blueberry, are you not gonna give me your bucket today? No, we've got haylage. That's far more interesting than playing with our bucket, isn't it? Where have you hidden it? Oh, you've buried it, haven't you? There we go. Normally he throws his bucket over the door for me, so I don't actually have to go in to get it. But tasty food is in there this morning, so that is just far more interesting than playing this bucket. They haven't actually been in for some days now. I don't know how many days it is, to be fair. Memory, shocking. Memory of a goldfish over here. But they have actually been pretty much out 24-7. So we've been rotating them between like the really well grazed down fields and some of the nicer greener ones up here. Obviously, we don't want to leave them on the really long green grass 24-7 because, well, for one, they'll just annihilate it because they're greedy buggers, basically. They're cobs at the end of the day. They like to eat. They like their food. Uh, but also, we just don't want them having that much green grass. Because so obviously, we've had a lot of rain this summer and the grass is seriously green. And I keep hearing stories of horses who are going down with laminitis that have never had laminitis before and just I don't want that in my life so they are on restricted grazing unfortunately for them. How are you doing sausage? You finished? Are you gonna give me your bucket? No you're just gonna play with it down there huh? Sounds like a dishwasher. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to hear that, but it just, it sounds like a dishwasher gargling away. <laughs> oh, are you going to make me come in to get your bucket as well? Honestly, boys, it's just not very good today, is it? The service isn't what it normally is. Take that now. Gimme, gimme. Thank you. Funny boy. 
Tiffany boy, can we tuck your plat back in? That always escapes, doesn't it? Always escapes, and then you chew on it. Where they're so long, they'll kind of like, they'll hang down by his mouth when he's grazing, and then he just chews them. <laughs> no, you're not going back out. No, 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 no. You're looking very bright and perky today, I have to say. Very bright and perky. You're almost looking mischievous. What are you plotting? Now we need to put your hood on, don't we? No, don't rub your beautiful hair out. Let me put your thing on. So I'm gonna have to put your, uh, I'm gonna have to put this on him in a minute, I think. You're a funny dude. Do you know that? No, you're not coming out. Uh, uh, uh. You stay in there, thank you. You're gonna have to shut your door. Or you're gonna cause mischief, aren't you? Uh, 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 uh. Hey, that was rude. Oh, he is in the worst mood lately. He's still off work, in case you're wondering. Um, actually, we have a little bit of good news for him. I'm taking it as good news anyway. So, had the vet out to have a look at him. Last week, this week, last week. Again, uh, just memory, not great. Um, but the vet came out to have a look at him just because I felt like it was taking a bit longer to come right than it did last time. And I was like, do you know what? Let's just get him checked. Um, you lot actually scared me a little bit. Obviously going back to the laminitis thing, like several people commented on one of my videos saying, oh, one, I wonder if he's got laminitis. Um, Cause you know, this is exactly what my horse was like. Intermittent lameness, no obvious reason. Are you having a good butt scratch there? Is that really good? Oh, you are so funny. <laughs> you can just enjoy his butt scratching in the background while I'm talking here. Um, yeah, so you guys kind of scared me a little bit with that as well. So we got the vet out to have a look at him. And it turns out there is nothing really going on with him. Um, my diagnosis, oh, cyclists, they're so loud. <laughs> um, turns out my diagnosis was pretty much bang on what the vet said, except she added a few fancier words than I know. <laughs> hey, don't squish me. You're so rude today. Um, so he's, he's okay. He's only very mildly lame, like very, very mildly lame. It's really difficult to spot it now. Um, he was fine on the flexion tests. That didn't make any difference. There's no lumps, no bumps or anything like that. There's no obvious damage. And there was a tiny bit of swelling. Um, I mean, I felt it, it's very, very slight, sort of around his fatlock area. The vet actually said that it was his tendon sheath that was swollen. So yeah. much more specific than what I was thinking, but oh, no, because I don't want you to rub your pretty hair out. You're a princess pony, you have to stay beautiful. You can't go rubbing a mohawk out again. Yeah, you're still growing last year's mohawk back out, aren't you? And it was hideous absolutely hideous you big dope mm. yeah so basically there's not really anything wrong with him that anybody could find so we just got him some more anti-inflammatories and he's still resting for now and he's so bored like the vet said to just kind of keep him on like restricted turnout and just keep him on the anti-inflammatories and don't that and see how we go but oh I feel like I need to just do something with him like I might take him out for some walks in hand just up to the end of the road and back just so he has a change of scenery because oh, he's just he's like a kid who's been locked in a house for weeks you would never cope if you had to go on box rest would you you just you wouldn't be able to deal with it you're such a baby it's just this is what he's been like he goes between like obsessively needy and wanting to be in everyone's space to just absolutely foul and grumpy you've been a right grumpus haven't you and he's actually been laying into the other horses a little bit which is completely unlike him um so we've had uh, we've been alternating their turnout so at night he goes out with nelly in one of the bear fields they all go in the bear fields at night and in the day, he's been going out with Blue, so he can have a sort of bromance thing, because they do love each other. They just, they can't spend too much time together, otherwise they get a bit stupid. And Blue usually turns a bit nasty when he gets stupid, because just lack of self-control, I think. 
And uh, yeah, they've been having their little plays and their scuffles out in the field. And he's taken it to a whole new level. Like, he's the antagonist now. Usually Blue is the antagonist, but you are the antagonist. You've got a right bee in your bonnet, haven't you? So I, I cannot wait to get back on him and get him back out doing some work so that we can kind of manage these uh, attitude problems we've got going on at the moment. And on top of that, he's just rude as well. Like you saw her a minute ago, like he's really bargy at the stable door. He's been napping as well. Like you'll try and lead him down the field and he just digs his heels in like, oh, I want to go the other way. And you're heavy. Like he's about 650 kilos. So when that digs its heels in, like what can you even do about it? Like with little thoroughbreds and ponies and stuff, you can kind of like give them a push and they, they actually move because they're not that heavy, but... It's just, it's a mountain. You're a moose, aren't you? Yeah, that's one of your nicknames, moose. Moose boy. <laughs> so good news on the Woodster front. There's nothing really to give us any cause for concern. I think it's just a waiting game now. Um, yeah, just give them a bit more time and fingers crossed we should be all good, which is a massive relief for me because for a moment there I was starting to think, oh my God, I broke Woody. But I think we're okay. <laughs> I think I was just getting possibly a bit impatient with the whole healing process. Um, we still don't really know what he's done. I think it's just, he's, he's just overworked something like the tendon by the signs of it. He's just overworked it. I think the combination of him picking up his canter work again, um, followed by him prattling around in the field excessively, like really excessively, I think it just overdid it. And he's just tweaked whatever he did earlier in the year. I mean, I've done it before. I remember, I think it was last year, I I hadn't been running for ages, like probably about ooh, eight, nine months, something crazy like that. And I thought it would be a great idea to go for a run. It was that time of the month where I thought I had superhuman powers and I had all this energy going on. And I just went up the hill and I went hell for leather. Like it wasn't a jog, it was a run, like a proper run. And I was up there for about an hour and the next day I woke up and I was like, oh, dang, I can't walk. Like I completely screwed my tendons where I just overworked them, where they weren't conditioned for it. So I got a feeling that's what he did. And mine took ages to come right again. Probably took about three months before I could walk comfortably on it. And then it probably took another four, four or five months on top of that again before I was, you know, like able to do physical activities without it hurting. I think that's that's probably kind of where he is. Um, yeah, just need more time. We also need you to stop being a grumpy git, okay? Yeah, he's, he's ignoring me now. <laughs> right, well, apparently it's not raining right now, so I probably could have used Kevin and given you guys better audio, but there we go, it's done now. Um, I'm gonna crack on and get some stuff done. I've got some poo picking to do and Hopefully, once they've dried out a bit, because they're soggy as anything right now, hopefully we'll go actually go out for a ride this afternoon. I want to take Miss Nelly New out for a nice ride, and I want to take Mr. Blueberry out for a nice ride. And I actually really want to take Stumpy out in her cart again. So fingers crossed that will all happen, and I will be sure to take the camera along so you guys can ride along with us. But for now, thank you for hanging out with us, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.